uh, welcome back. So, in in the last previous lectures, we had looked into um, definitions of relations, uh, how they relate to functions, and what what it means for an equation to be a function, and what are the properties of a function. Also, associated with each function, there are some sets which are of importance, and these are basically domain, codomain, and range. And in when when we are working with a function, it's not only important to know uh, the behavior of the function, that is how the function changes uh, over its domain, but also to know the domain and range of the function. So that is over what values the function is defined and for what values uh, does the function ex exist and also what is the output of the function. So last time when we had seen functions, we had seen it from an input-output perspective as well. So in that we were, trying to, uh, we were writing the function as y equal to f of x. So we need to see for what values x uh, this function is defined and what are the corresponding values of y. And we had seen some examples uh, using um, using basic functions that are uh, used in used in a lot of applications and also um, uh, also that you will read about in physics and chemistry. Um, and today we would just take uh, some, some slightly complicated functions um, which have uh, come in previous exams and try to um, solve some problems related, related to domain and range of those functions. Uh, while we are solving these problems, we will also realize that there are uh, some functions which are uh, fairly common and we would like to know uh, more about them. And so we will go through some of the basic properties of these functions, their domain, their range, their behavior, and try to learn more about functions. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's begin. So let's um, let's take a ten, take an example from a previous uh, exam. So let's say we are given uh, an equation of the form two raised to x plus two raised to y equals two. So this equation in by itself is not a function because this is an equation in two variables. Uh, this is an equation that you typically have not uh, encountered so much probably because the equations that we see are often of the type like linear equations or polynomial equations, uh, equations with polynomials. But uh, this, is, this is an equation with uh, variables x and y and we can define a function using this equation. So let's say we define a function y equal to f of x using this equation. So if a function is given, given in this format, um, in this format, it is an implicitly defined function. And here we have to come up with the definition of uh, uh, function in this format from this equation. So let's see uh, how we can do that. So let's first try to isolate y and x on one side. So we take this. And one thing, uh, once we have 2 raised to y equal to 2 minus 2 raised to x, we have to isolate y um, as a function of x. And one way to do this is through logarithms. So uh, in case you don't know about uh, logarithms, uh, don't worry, we will uh, we'll know more about them soon. Uh, but essentially they are, a uh, they are an operation by which we can get exponent of, a, of an expression. So we take log on both sides with the base 2. So if you don't know logarithms, this might be something which is new to you. And we'll take it to the next part. And this essentially gives us y. And now we have a function. Uh, in the form that we were interested in. So this can be written as y equal to f of x. And now once we have that, we can figure out the domain of this function. And if we want, we can also figure out the range of this function. So the log function uh, has a specific uh, requirement for its arguments that they be positive. So the basic uh, equation that we use, like in the examples that we had seen before, uh, some properties that we had used were the denominator should not be zero, so or the argument of a square root function should not be negative. So this is a property of the log function, and that is what we are using to figure out the domain. So two minus two raised to x is uh, greater than zero. So 
So this is one equation that we get. And we also know that uh, exponent of any function um, is always positive. So we have additional constraint because of that if we would like to use it. And once we have that, uh, we take uh, log on both sides. So again, we could have taken log with respect to a different basis, but since here we are, we are working with two, we are taking it with the base two. And this is essentially one is greater than x. So, so the um, so the equation that we have for the domain is this set uh, given by this inequation, one is greater than x, which is essentially domain of uh, which defines the domain to be. the set from minus infinity to 1. So this was a slightly challenging uh, example because uh, we, we, the equation of the function was not given to us. Uh, fr uh, we were given an equation from which we had to come up with, uh, uh, com come up with the form of y equal to f of x. And then we had to use property of uh, log of x to, so this was, uh, this is a property of log of x that we used. And this this is the form in uh, this is the form in which we wanted our equation to be, to figure out the domain of the function. So here we had like these two interesting con concepts that you might have to use sometimes. So please be aware of those. Um, so this was um, an example where we had been given uh, the function in the form of an equation, but oftentimes you can see problems where the functions are given in the form of. Uh, graphs so you are given a graph of a function um, and the, and based on that graph you have to figure out what is the domain and the range so let's consider another question where you are given the graph of a function so if you remember the examples from the previous time uh, we were dealing with uh, um, functions where we were given explicitly what the function was, but now we saw one place where we had to come up with an equation and one place where we are not dealing with the equation at all, but instead we are just dealing with a graph. So let's say this is a representative graph of a function or a graph of a function which is given to us. And the, fun uh, the person who specified this function told us that this is the entire function and now we have to come up with the domain and the range. So there is a very easy uh, trick, so in order to figure out the domain, uh, look at the graph from top and take the shadow or project the graph onto the x-axis. So this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. And whatever sets you find here are the domain. And similarly, if you look at it from along this direction, whatever you find over here. So that is, uh, this is very fine. This is the range. So union of these two, uh, these two gives us the domain. And union of these two gives us the range. So oftentimes you will see problems uh, where either you are given plots or you are given complicated equations for which you can come up with plots and based on that you can come up with um, the domain and range of a function. Uh, now one thing to keep in mind is let's say somebody gave you a plot which is of this format. Where you didn't know what is happening to the function outside where the uh, graph was drawn. So there, first you have to ask yourself the question whether you know this function uh, outside these uh, boundaries. If you don't know these functions, you cannot say anything about the domain and range just from the plot. Uh, if you do know it, then you can again follow these principles to figure out the domain and range. So if you remember last time we had seen in similar uh, fashion an example of um, sine of x for which the plot is given like this. And here we can easily apply, uh, even though this extends to infinity, like it's defined over the whole real line, 
we can figure out the domain and range based on uh, based on these principles because we know the behavior of the function elsewhere. So that is one important aspect to keep in mind. Uh, so here we saw one example uh, which where we had to figure out the domain and range visually. And oftentimes you won't get examples where uh, you won't get problems where uh, the problem is as simple as this. But you are given a function for which you can draw a plot, uh, for which you can draw a plot, and then you can figure out domain and range. Or uh, you are given an equation from which you have to uh, come up with an equation of this format to figure out domain and range. And again, one thing that we are that we'll consistently observe throughout this um, uh, throughout this um, lecture is. Uh, Domain and range and other properties of function depend on uh, the functions uh, which are there. Uh, the func uh, the some of the very commonly known functions, such as in this case it's log, in this case it's sine, and it's always useful to know properties of these functions. So uh, the next thing that we will try to do is try to study some properties of uh, some commonly occurring functions that you will see not only in your math textbooks but also in your uh, in in uh, also in a lot of applications in physics, sometimes in chemistry, and they also appear in like different parts of uh, um, like day-to-day -day applications in real life too. So uh, we'll start with uh, trigonometric, uh, some trigonometric functions, um, and then go on to exponential and logarithmic functions.